Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word. Hallelujah. Today I'm going back to one of my favorites. My very, very favorite. It always gives me a lot of confidence and um, joy in God. And that is uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse, verses 14 and 15 from the Amplified. Without further ado, let's just jump in. And this is the confidence. You want confidence? The assurance. You want an assurance? The privilege of boldness. You want to be bold in what you're doing? Which we have in him. I read that again. And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure. Hallelujah. Not you're uncertain. You are sure. You're not unsure. You are sure. Certain. We are sure that if we ask anything, so are you going to ask anything? Before you ask, we are sure that when you ask that thing, make any request. Notice, any request. Isn't my father too much? Make any request according to his will. The provides so there is according to his will. And I keep asking, what is his will? His will is everything he has promised in his word. In agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. Hallelujah. Isn't it a blessed thing for God to listen to you and to hear you? Because the Bible makes us understand that he does not listen to the prayers of the wicked. But if you pray according to his will, hallelujah, he listens to you and he hears you. Remember, he also said that he knows what you have need of even before you pray. So he's the one actually gingering you to pray. Because he's not a brigand. He's not an outlaw. He has bequitted the earth to man. So for him to step into this domain to effect change, he needs you to invite him. The same way you would invite your landlord to come and fix something that is gone awry in the house you rented from him. The landlord cannot just step in and say, I'm going, coming to fix something. He needs you to put in an order or a request for him to intervene. Hallelujah. I take that again. And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. So that makes, before you even go to ask him, you, if, if, you know, if you have doubt that he will listen to you, you cannot be effective in your prayer. And you, you will not get because you will not have faith. But if you are sure that he will listen to you and he will hear you, because he has said so. Yes, you are, you are now coming to him based on his promise. You are coming to him based on his will, based on his word. He tells you that we know, we are confident, we are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus also said in the book of, uh, I think that was in John chapter 11, when he, was talk when he went to raise up Lazarus from the dead. When at, at the tomb, at the sepulchre, he had said, Father, I thank you that thou hast heard me and that thou always hearest me. Why? He was saying this, that he was saying this because of the people around. But he was confident that the Father always heard him. Why? It's because of this, because he made his request all the time in accordance, in agreement with his own plan with God's plan, in accordance to his will. Now, okay, let me, let me hold that. The next verse, verse 15. And if, since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask. Now, look at that beautiful part there. When Jesus says, thank you that you always, I'm grateful that you always hear me. Why did he say that? You notice he didn't pray that. I'm grateful that you always hear me. And if, since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge, just like Jesus, he knew with settled and absolute knowledge that he had granted as his present possession the request made of God the Father. So in this case, an absolute knowledge that we have granted us as our present possession. Are we seeing it as our present possession? No. We know that it has been granted to us as our present possession, the request made of him. Do you remember in... Uh, John chapter 16, 
I think that was verse 23 and 24, where we, where we talked of yesterday, where he says that if you ask, he says, I, I, I assure you most solemnly that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will grant it to you. Tie it in with this. He says, we know that he listens to us. What, and if since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted us as our present possessions, the request made of him. It's, it ties in so beautifully. You ask in accordance with his will. What is his will? His will is his word. Then you know. With settled assurance that it has been granted to you. If it has been granted to you, whether you see, see it or you don't see it now, it doesn't matter. Because you know that the one that cannot lie said this, that he has granted it to you. So it must be. I, keep, I love saying this, that when God said, let there be light, darkness could not argue and say, no, we overpower light. Light could not argue and say, no, can't you see it's too dark? Light burst into being. The same way, when God has granted you that which you have asked, the thing cannot stay hidden. It must appear. It must appear. God bless you. Hallelujah.